There was a little, this little guy. Johnny had a little baby brother, and uh, he was crying so loudly. He was crying the hell out of him. And so Johnny asked the mother, "Mom, where did he come from?" So the mom said, "Johnny, he came from heaven." So Johnny said, "Now I know why they threw him out of heaven." <laughs> so there was this little boy, guy again. Johnny was a little, you know. Johnny always liked to make. Uh, he was a naughty guy, and so he he got spanking from his mom. And when he got spanking from his mom because of something he did, his mom sent him in the room and asked him, "Go think about what he did, and then pray." Ask God to forgive you and come, come back to me. He went. He he went to the room. He thought about it. He prayed, and he came back to mom and said, "Mom, I prayed and I thought about the things what I did, and I prayed to God." So mom said, "Very good. If you have asked God to help you not to repeat the same thing and not to be bad, uh, He will help you out." He said, "Mom, no, I did not pray about that. I said." I pray that you will able to put up with me with everything that I do. <laughs> okay, so what satisfies God? What satisfies God as a human being, as a man, as a woman, or even the animals when they are thirsty? What quenches their thirst? Water. When they are hungry, food. And if the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, a good news from far away country is like a cold water to a thirsty soul. And so we have certain things that satisfies us. But today we will see what satisfies God. What satisfies God? Is there anything that would satisfy God? Can we see in the Bible about God's satisfaction? And so today, the title of this subject of this preaching will be "What Satisfies God." I want you to turn with me to the book of Hebrews, chapter eleven, and everybody knows this verse by memory. Verse number six: "But without faith, it is impossible to please Him." For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. No matter what you do, no matter how much you do, no matter it's like no matter no matter how many times you go out soul winning, no matter how many times you share the gospel, no matter how much offering you give, no matter how much tithes you give, or no matter what you do or uh, about your food, even the Bible says anything that is of not uh, faith is sin. Amen. So no matter what you do, if you do it without faith. It is sin. So, as a Christian, we are saved by the faith by when we put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. For you are saved by grace through faith, and that not of yourselves; it is the gift of God, and not of works, lest any man should boast. Amen. Amen. So, we are saved by faith. We are saved by the grace of God when we put our faith. In the atonement of the Lord Jesus Christ, in His shed blood, death, burial, and resurrection, and so as a Christian, the most important thing for you and for me that we have and are given is the faith that we can come to God and believe that He is the provider. He is the God who answers our prayers. Faith is simply the bringing of our minds into accord with the truth. It is adjusting our expectations to the promises of God in complete assurance that that the God of the whole earth cannot lie. 
The believing man accepts a promise of God as a fact, as a solid, as a mountain, and vastly more enduring. His faith changes nothing except his own personal relation to the word of promise. God's word is true whether we believe it or not. Can I have a witness this morning? Amen. Human unbelief cannot alter the character of God. God's word is true whether we believe it or not. And human unbelief cannot alter the character of God. If he has promised in the Bible, he will fulfill it. But you and I as a Christian, when we come in the presence of God, when we come and pray and ask him and have our expectation, let us come and ask him and pray and believe in faith. Amen. Because if you do anything, no matter how long you pray, no matter how much you ask, if you don't have faith, it's of no use. And so when we come to God, we say, oh, God promises that I can have. And so when we come to God, this is not some name and claim thing. This is not the charismatic name and claim. This is about the Bible when you need something. You have an expectation. The Bible says in Psalm chapter 37, verse number 4, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and He will give thee the desires of thine heart. Amen. But if I come with a desire and no delight in God, which means no faith in God that He would give me, he will, I will never have it. The Bible says you have not because you ask not. And the Bible says when you ask, you ask without faith. And if you and I ask without faith, we will never have it. And so the Bible says, but without faith, it is impossible to please Him. You have some needs this morning. Your family is going through some trial, trials this day. Or you have some expectation or you, 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 you desire something. My beloveds, let this morning be a morning where we will say, no matter year after, no matter whatever time I go in prayer, no matter whatever I ask God in prayer, I will always do it believing that He is able. Amen? Amen? It is possible with men. It is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Amen. And so the Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. So when we come to pray, when we come and ask God in prayer, we need to believe that yes, my God will able and is able to give me, provide me, and I believe with all my heart, and I will go to Him. Amen. And so, faith in God satisfies Him. Faith in God satisfies him because he says, wow, my child has so much faith in me. I've been reading about Hudson Taylor this, uh, th this week about his biography. Hudson Taylor, what a man, what a blessing. He was living, uh, he, he just lived for God, for his needs to be met and everything. He, he, it says that his desire uh, was to come to China and the, and the people there in China, um, China evangeliz evangelization mission uh, promised him that when he will reach China, there will be some money for him so he can start out. So he said, wow, they are going to give me money. So he came to China. But when he reached to China, he went to the consulate, he went to find out for his mail over there. There was no money. In a new place, he had no money. He just traveled on the sea uh, with just two shillings at that time. And he had to pay to collect his mother's letter in the post office. And then he had no money at all. The people who promised that they would give did not send. And now what? He smiled and said, There's another opportunity for me to see God working in my life. Amen. 
And so he came and he, he knelt down and he started praying, believing that God is able and he is the rewarder of they that search him and they that believe in him. And so he came by faith and prayed and prayed and prayed to God. And God provided his needs. Hudson Taylor won so many people in China. Amen. We, we, we study about George Mueller's bi- uh, biographies. Man, he was a man of faith. When there was nothing, when there was nothing. You know, we, we read he, ran the, uh, he was uh, running this orphanage by faith. And one day it was so that there was no food in the storeroom. So the morning, uh, he made the children to see it and they were ready for school and they were sitting on the table. There was glass, there was um, plates, but there was no food. Children began to ask, there's plate, there's cup, there's no milk, there's no butter. George Mueller, his wife and the people who worked for him went back in the room, knelt down and asked God, Lord, what should we do? We are trusting in you. We pray that thou will provide the needs. As they finished praying, there was a knock on the door. There was a knock on the door. And when they, knocked, when they opened the door, there was a cart, there was a lorry outside there. Because it, and they could not go further because it was broken. The, the lorry broke down and the, the lorry was filled with food for a party over there. But it was not possible to go because the party was almost over. And by the time they reached, the food will be spoiled. And they wanted to use this food for the orphanage. Amen. God is the provider. God can and God still and God will always provide and meet his need, your, his children's need. If we come by faith, believing that he is the provider. Amen. When I finished this, uh, when I graduated from Bible college and I came and I wanted to start something, my pastor gave me 2,500 rupees. It's like $40. 2,500 rupees. And in the three months, I had nothing, but God miraculously did great. I, I can just tell you stories after stories after stories, the Lord providing my needs. I remember one day walking, uh, walking into the, um, in, in Pomorpa, I guess. There were some people whom I was visiting and giving them Bible study. They were living right up to the mountain there. And I would go three times in a week to give Bible study and I walk. And one day, I do not know what happened. It was the afternoon time as I was walking. My leg just crumpled. And, I, and there was a cramp on my leg and I was unable to walk. And it was in 2007. And I prayed to God, Lord, if I only had a bicycle. If I only had a bicycle, it, uh, it would help me a lot in the ministry. I was unable. Believe me, I'm not exacer- exaggerating even a little bit. I, tr- I prayed to God at that moment, Lord, if I had just a bicycle, it would help me so much in the ministry. But yet, I saw my man going over there with a the bike and so I asked him for a lift and he dropped me right to that people's place and I went and I was able, by the time I came back, I was fine in my leg. Monday, I get a call from a family and they called me for a cup of tea and I, so I went and, I, and they wanted to talk to me and they had some problems. So that's what they said. We have something to do with you, brother. Could you please come we have, we, and can you have some tea with us? We have something special today. And so I went thinking, what is it? They said some problems. And they said they wanted to discuss something with me. And they said, come for tea. So there was so much of mixer talks. So I went. When I went, they gave me a... The lady of the house handed over a card to me. In the card, it was, there was a candle on the card. And it was written, you came as a candle and lighted our house. Brightened our house. I said, thank you. That was so sweet of you. And there was inside the money, uh, 1,500 rupees to pay to the registration office. I said, what is that? I thought they just gave me a gift. But there was a bill in that. And it says 37,000 rupees. What was that? I could not believe it. I mean, I had faith that God can provide and God will provide. But I could not believe. But I, when I opened and I was, I was are you serious? I said, yes, brother, yes, this is for you. We, 
we are doing so much and so you've been traveling by birds and by walking and we thought you need this. And we already bought a bike for you. It's in the showroom. You can just go, give this receipt, pay this money and get the bike. Amen. God still provides if his children are willing to put faith in him. You know, most of our Christian, why we complain and why we are stingy, it's because we don't believe. We think, ah, oh, no, no, if I give, I will lose. No, when you give, he gives more. The problem with us is we are dried up spiritually in faith. We are dried up in all our, uh, all the things. And then we don't allow, we don't see God working in our life. It is impossible to please God. But faith satisfies him. He says, wow, my child, my son, my daughter is believing me for all this thing. I still have great faith in God. There's a day that's going to come where God will give for grace and truth Baptist Church their own church building. I still have faith. Do you? Am I? <laughs> what? Do you? I don't believe. I believe God is going to give us the church building. I believe that many souls will be saved and be added to this church. And I believe we are going to do great and mighty things for God. And God is going to, God as He is working now, He will continue to work in and through our lives. And He is going to do great things. I believe with all my heart. He takes us step by step. I started with five people with four broken chairs. To, and then God added people. We started in my mom's living room and now we are here in this comfortable place to worship God. Who thought all these things? But I had faith that God will bless us step by step. Amen? It doesn't matter whether you give or not. God will and will and will bless and He will bless as we stay faithful to Him. My God shall supply all my needs, but it's in your pocket, whether you believe it or not. Amen? Somebody said, my God provided all my needs, it's still in your pocket, you're not giving it. That's what some missionary said, I'm just kidding with you. But faith, when we come to God, do we have faith? It satisfies Him, say, wow, it's just like a small little child comes to the father and asks for a... You know, whatever, and the father smiles and says, well, my child knows that if she or he comes to me, then I'm able to give. Amen. It brings so much of joy to the father and to the mother when the child comes. And uh, You know, my friend, don't just believe God just for 500 rupees. It is okay to believe God for your needs. Amen. But don't be greedy. God promises that he will provide your needs and not your greeds. Amen? Amen? So let's come by faith. Because faith will satisfy God. Faith satisfies God. You, you, you think about that lady. The Bible says in Luke chapter 8. Verse number 43. A woman having an issue of blood. 12 years. Which had spent all her living upon physician. Neither could be healed of any. There was a lady there. And she had this issue of blood for 12 long years. And what the Bible says is she spent all of her living upon the medicines. Think about the condition that she's been having. The condition is she's painful. It's a shame. And no one wants to do anything with her. And she spent all her money on medicines and doctors. And the Bible says it only grew more worse. And a woman having an issue of blood 12 years which had spent all her living upon physician neither could be healed of any came behind him and touched the border of his garment and immediately her issue of blood stanked. And Jesus said, Who touched me? When all denied, Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude throng thee and press thee and says thou who touched me? And Jesus says, somebody has touched me, for I perceive that the virtue is gone out of me. 
And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared unto him before all the people for what cause she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. And he said unto her daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace. The beauty of this thing is, there was, the Bible says, multitude thronged after him. Multitude prayers. Multitude of people there be there. Jesus is there. This lady heard about Jesus. Her faith increases. Because the Bible says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. Amen. And so somebody said, was shouting in the neighborhood and said, Hey, do you know that Jesus who heals, that Jesus who speaks, that Jesus who does good, who claims himself to be the Messiah, he's there in the market. And when she heard about Jesus, you know what happened? Faith increased to her. Amen. Oh man, it was painful for her to get up. It was painful for her to go to that public place. It was not the right thing to do according to the situation of the society. But she got up anyway because she had faith. And she walked anyway. And she came to that place where Jesus was. Hey, the Bible says the multitude throng after him. Multitude prayers. Many people prayers. But only one woman touched by faith. <laughs> Amen. You see how many people touched Jesus Christ on that day. But only one woman touched by faith. And Jesus, Jesus saw many people touching him. But never that virtue went away. But here is a woman who suffering for 12 years. And when she touched Jesus, the virtue went away from him. He felt it. I got the pleasure. Someone touched me by faith. I'm satisfied. <sighs> Someone touched me by faith. Amen? Amen? The virtue is gone out of me. Who touched me? Oh, hundreds of people were touching him or pushing him. But there's one lady who needed, and she believed, and as she had faith, she came and touched the hem of the garment. Amen. And she was made whole at that moment. Oh, her faith satisfied God. The daughter, thy faith had made thee whole. Amen. Thy faith had made thee whole. I can tell you about the stories of my sister when she was born. Everybody thought, oh, she would almost die. Everybody gave up because of the sickness. But my mom and my brother, dad would pray, kneel down and pray and pray and pray and pray and pray and fast and pray. And one fine day, they prayed by faith and God touched her and healed her. I do believe some of you sitting here can give testimonies about God providing your needs. I do believe you can give testimonies about God healing you from your sicknesses. Or God rescuing you from the accident. As I was traveling one day, the first time when I had this bike, it means 2007. I was coming from Mar Miramar. Every evening Miramar used to go to distribute tracks and I would come. As I came, it was an iffy thing during those times, film festival. Someone from back, he was with his girlfriend. He was probably showing off with his, to his girlfriend how speed he could ride the bike. He came and dashed me, hit me from back. But he was a very professional driver, I guess. He, um, he controlled himself and he just hit me and ran off. And it hit me such a way where I flew. The bike went one, one side and I went the other side of the road. My mobile went, my helmet fell in another place. It r happened right in the junction of Marriott. You know that five star hotel. Right there at the junction. It was if the, tra the traffic was amazing. It's too many. And it was at 6 p.m. And I just flung up from the bike and fell. I could have been a hamburger that evening. Or I could be a chutney that evening. Behind me was a bus that was carrying people with passengers. 
But God protected me. All that I had is I had some stain. One, two, three, and four. Here I have. When I fell that way. And I have a mark over here. That's all. No bones broken. No emergency. I, st- I got up. Somebody helped me with the bike. I brought the bike home. God protected. Amen. He still does it. But he gets the glory when you put faith in him and when you allow him to act in your, in your life. Amen. He says, ah, oh, that satisfies me. I can tell you stories after stories what God has done and how God provided my needs in the seven years of ministry, the eight years of ministry. But my friends, it is the faith that will make God to move the mountains in your life. Amen. It is faith. And so we find how this, faith, this lady who had faith satisfied God and made God to act. And she was healed. Amen. Faith satisfies God. We see, true worshippers satisfies God. I didn't say worshippers. I said true worshippers. Amen. I don't want to point and tell who are true worshippers and worshippers because I do not know what's in your heart. But I know that God knows this morning how many of us are true worshippers. I do want to take it for granted that everybody here are true worshippers. Amen. But then God knows what is your desire. If you are a born again Christian, are you really, do you really know that you will go to heaven if you die tonight? Your idols and your church and your temples and your priests and your, your, your sadhus, oh, nobody can save you and forgive you from sin. Only Jesus Christ can forgive you from your sins. Amen. Amen. The Jewish who took the, uh, took the stone to throw on Jesus because he made himself as God. Because the Jewish knows, the Jewish knew that only God could forgive sins. Amen? Amen. And Jesus forgiving sin made himself as God. And so only Jesus can forgive sin. Because he is the savior. He died for the sins of the whole world. He shed his precious blood so our sins can be washed. And he rose from the dead so we may have victory today. True worshippers. True worshippers satisfies God. I can safely say on the authority of all that is revealed in the word of God. That any man or woman on this earth who is bored and turned off by worship is not ready for heaven. Did you hear that? Let me say it again if you can say amen. I can safely say. On the authority of all that is revealed in the word of God. That any man or woman on this earth. Who is bored and turned off by worship. Is not ready for heaven. You like it. You lump it. You hate me for it. I don't care. That's the truth. Amen. Sometimes, A.W. Tozer said, sometimes I go to God and say, God, if thou dost never answer another prayer while I live on this earth, I will still worship thee as long as I live and in the ages to come for what thou hast done already. Amen. I don't need another reason to worship God. I already have the reason to worship God. He saved me. He is the true living God. He redeemed me from eternal damnation. He poured his blood and washed me. And made me whiter than snow. I already have a reason to worship him. I don't need any more reasons to worship him. Amen. That's enough. But he still continues to pour upon us. But will you still worship him? Will you still worship him if he still if he doesn't answer your prayers? What if he doesn't answer your prayer? Well, what he says, not now. What he says, I won't. Will you still love him? Will you still worship him? 
Sad about this preaching that's going on in the TV and on the churches today. You trust in Jesus, all your problems will be solved. Trust in Jesus, your pigs will not die. Trust in Jesus, you will increase your bank balance. That's fake and that's not the gospel. The Bible says, if you wish to be my disciple, take up your cross and follow me daily. Amen. Amen. I will still worship him if it does not answer my prayer. I will still worship him if I, my prayer is not answered. Because he has already made me his child. And that reason is alone sufficient for me to worship him. Because I am his child. He is my father. He is the true living God. And he redeemed me from hell. Sometimes I go to God and say, God, if thou dost never answer another prayer while I live on this earth. I will still worship thee as long as I live and in the ages to come for what thou hast done already. God's already put me so far in debt that if I were to leave one million in millennium, I couldn't pay him for what he has done for me. Amen. Oh brother, you're asking for 10%? Oh, really? No, I didn't ask you for 10 person. I asked you to give all of your life to God. Amen. I told you, I, I, I'm telling you that God, everything that, that you have belongs to you. And if you love that much more than what you need to give, then man, there's some problem with your spiritual life. Immediately, when, if, uh, that's a problem with you. I mean, you have no faith to trust in God. You are afraid that God will grab your material. You are afraid God will grab your entertainment. You are afraid God will grab your friend. You are afraid God will grab your money. You are afraid of God and you have no faith. Without faith it is impossible to please God. And if you are a Christian. When God put a test. Don't fail in trusting God. Trust Him. People who have put his trust and faith in God has never failed. Amen. Never, never, never. Will you still love him? Will you still trust him? Will you still give if God doesn't do anything? Will you still be faithful? If nothing happens, nothing moves. Will you still be faithful? Are you satisfied? Of your salvation? No. Then you have a problem. In John chapter 4 verse number 23. As we read. The Bible says. But the hour cometh. And now is when the true worshippers. Shall worship the father. In spirit and in truth. For the father seeketh such to worship him. Hey beloveds. It gives him satisfaction. When you worship him in truth and spirit. Amen. Amen. Ah, there my worshippers are worshipping me in truth and in spirit. These are true worshippers and I get satisfaction and pleasures. That's what God says. Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty who was, who is and who will be. And he gets that satisfaction. Amen. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive praise and glory. For thou hast created all things for thy pleasures. Amen. Oh, my beloveds, he gets satisfaction from his creations when you truly worship the Creator. True worshippers satisfies God. True worshippers satisfied God. The Bible says God is a spirit and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. The Bible says in Mark chapter 14 verse 3. Mark chapter 14. Come, come over there. Let's read, read about it. Worshipping God. In Mark chapter 3, uh, 4, uh, uh, I mean 14, verse number 3, well, 1 onwards we shall read. After two days was a feast of the Passover. 
and of unleavened bread. And the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might take him by craft and put him to death. But they said, not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar of the people. And being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper. How many of you think that if a leper comes to this room, you would like to sit next to him? How many of you think if a poor man will come with not a very rich clothes and will sit next to you, you will sit next to him? How many of you think that if we have a visitor, uh, we will have a visitor? How many of you expect that visitor to come to you and introduce you, his self to you? Uh, how many of you will go and introduce yourself to him and say, it was a blessing, brother, you came to this church. What a wonderful blessing it is to, to see you in the house of the Lord. Or you think you're somebody that somebody should come to you and tell you something and that they should wish you and they should speak to you about it and introduce or you will go to them and humble yourself and say, Hey brother, what a blessing it is that you came to the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Humility. Humility is what important is in Christianity. And being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper as he sat at meat. There came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment or spike knot. Very precious. So she kept it home because she could not give it to Jesus. Is that what is written? Some of you are not looking at your Bible. Mark chapter 14. And being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper. As he said at me, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment of spike nut. Very precious. And she broke the box and poured it on his head. Amen. He is very precious to me. And so I will give him what is very precious to me. Amen. Do we have Christians today in this world? Who think what is most precious belongs to God? Do we have? Come on! Do we really have? People in this world who claim themselves as Bible believing Christians. Who think that God is precious. And the precious thing that I have belongs to God. And I will give the precious thing to God to worship Him. Do we still have? I know why you don't answer. Because the precious thing that we have belongs to us today. And God doesn't have the right to worry. You are not my Lord. I will call you master. As Judas called. Do you know that Judas never called Jesus as Lord? Do you know that Judas only called Jesus as master? The world is yet to see what God can do with one man, with one woman who is totally committed and surrender to the Lord. Amen. Do you want to be that one man who is totally surrendered to God? Do you want to be that one man who is totally committed to God? What do you think? How much is the price for Jesus Christ to buy? With how much money can you buy Jesus? Can you? Can you buy him with your money? Can you buy him with your gold? Can you buy him with your wealth? You can never. You are still in debt. For millennium you are under debt. Because he paid. He paid for and he bought you as a ransom. He shed his precious blood. I know when I talk about this. It, it really tickles you. I mean it really hurts you right? Thank you sister. God bless you for that. It's a blessing to have such ladies in this church. Who says yes and no and yes and amen. Amen. We are living in a day and age where Christians think that what belongs to them belongs to them and not to God. I'm not trying to manipulate anybody here. I'm trying to tell you, live a life in such a way that you don't have right over yours. But God has. Live in such a way. Be willing to live for God. Why, why, why are you talking like this brother? Because it's a passionate thing that's in my heart. 
It's kind of a burden in my heart when Christians don't be generous for the cause of God. It's a burning thing in my heart when I see Christians are not really committed for the cause of God. But look at this wonderful lady. Where the world, the society thought she is a prostitute. Oh man. Think about her. She brought the precious thing for God. Think about her. Most of your precious things is 10 rupees, isn't it? And being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at mead, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment or spike nut, very precious, and she broke the, break the box and poured it on his head. And there were some that had indignation within themselves. Are you indignated when I'm preaching this way? No. Amen? Amen. There were some that had indignation within themselves and said, Why was this waste of ointment made? When you do it for God, nothing is wasted. Amen? Amen. It's a worship unto Him. Worship God. People told me when I had this youth meeting thing and I... And... and, uh, and I had some amount in me with me, and I spent and I invested for the youths and something. Why are you wasting so much money? It's not a waste. It's God's money need to be used for God's work. Sowing the seed to reap one day, Amen. And there were some that had indignation within themselves and said, "Why was this waste of the ointment made?" For it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and have been given to the poor and they murmured against her. And Jesus said, Let her alone. Why trouble her? She has wrought a good work on me. Amen. She has satisfied me today. She has shown me that nothing is very precious to her than I am. Wow. My beloved, is Jesus truly precious to you? Really? I'm talking to Grace and Truth Baptist Church. Is Jesus truly precious to you? Are you serious? Think about this. How much precious is He to you today? Is He alive? Can you breathe without Him? The next breath you breathed was the gift of God. You cannot live without Jesus Christ. He should be the most precious thing in yours and my life. Amen. He is precious to me. Jesus says, hey, leave her alone. Why trouble? Don't stop those who are faithful to the cause of... Don't stop them. Don't make them like you. Amen? Amen. If somebody is zealous and faithful, come on, don't pour a bucket of cold water on someone's head who is zealous for the Lord. Amen? Amen? Come on, encourage that brother, encourage that sister. Don't trouble. Let her alone. Why trouble her? She has wrought a good work on me. She has satisfied me. True worshippers, you satisfy God when you come to Him and and worship Him. Amen. Amen. Worship Him. She worshipped by giving a precious thing to God. And it satisfied him. To worship God is to recognize his worth or worthiness. To look Godward and to acknowledge in all appropriate ways the value of what we see. The Bible calls this activity as glorifying God. 
or giving glory to God and views it as the ultimate aim and form and from one point of view the whole duty of man. You know what is your duty? To give glory to God in everything. The Bible says, whatsoever you do, eat or drink, do it unto the, unto the glory of God. Amen. That satisfies Him. When you worship to glorify Him. Scripture views the glorifying of God as a sixfold activity. Praising God for all that He is and all His achievements. Thanking Him for His gifts and His goodness to us. Asking Him to meet our own and others' needs. Offering Him our gifts. Our... No, 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 no. Don't tell us about gifts, brother. I can worship Him by praying, singing, reading, but not giving. Right? You have not worshipped God unless you have given to God. I'm touching your nerves. Because I know where the nerve is. You know, you go to the doctor for injection. The doctor knows where the nose is, right? And if you cannot find his, find your veins, what he does? And then he gets it, right? Hit a little bit, you get it. You'll not know the nose where it is. Oh boy. Asking him to meet our own and others' needs. Offering him our gifts, our service and ourselves. Learning of him from his word. Read and preached. Read and preached and obeying his voice. Telling others of his worth. Both by public confession and testimony to what he has done for us. Thus we might say that the basic formulas of worship are these. Lord, you are wonderful. Thank you, Lord. Please, Lord. Take this, Lord. Yes, Lord. Listen to me, Lord. Amen. It's like a child talking to the father. Daddy. Oh, Daddy. Please, Daddy. Oh, me. That's how worshiping. You build that relationship with God. True worshiper satisfies God. Amen. Amen. Are you a true worshiper today? You can satisfy Him. This then is worship in its largest sense. Petition as well as praise. Preaching as well as prayer. Hearing as well as speaking. Action as well as words. Obeying as well as offering. Loving people as well as loving God. However, the primary acts of worship are those which focus on God directly. And we must not imagine that work for God in the world as a substitute for direct fellowship. Let me read. And we, the primary acts of worship are those which focus on God directly. Amen. And we must not imagine that the work for God in the world is a substitute for direct fellowship with Him in praise and prayer and devotion. Amen. I know some other people would say, Hey brother, why didn't you come to church for worship? So I was winning souls there. Hey, no. Serving God is not a substitute for worshipping God. Amen. And we must not imagine that the work for God in the world is a substitute for direct fellowship with Him in praise and prayer and devotion. I will not be complete in this preaching if I do not mention this because this is not the least thing, but this is the most important thing that I'm going to say. What satisfies God? Faith satisfies God. True worshippers satisfy God. And finally but which is actually supposed to be the first, the atonement of Jesus Christ satisfied God. Amen. Amen. The Bible uses the word propitiation. The word propitiation means the righteous, holy anger of God was satisfied by the shed blood and the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
man was in enmity with God. But Jesus reconciled it by shedding his precious blood and dying for our sin. And he made that gap at becoming a bridge. Amen. The word propitiation means the righteous anger of God was satisfied by the shed blood and the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank the Lord for his sacrifice on the cross. God's the cross is the lightning rod of grace that short circuits God's wrath to Christ so that the only so that only the light of his love remains for believer. The Bible says in book of Romans chapter 3 verse 25 whom God has set forth to be propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. I gave a gospel tract of, of, of this was a life to one a friend of mine who was a Hindu. He went through the tracts and he read it and he read from page to page and page to page. And he was under conviction. He began to cry. He said, you Christians are so blessed. You all have somebody to forgive your sin. You all, somebody has, uh, uh, has done the sacrifice. He understood as he read this gospel tracts. And he, he saw he was under conviction. And he came under conviction. He realized that he was a sinner. He said, in, in our religion, we do not have someone to forgive our sin. And we have to work for our sins daily. Sacrifice animals' blood, or dip in the water, or do some pilgrimage. I want that forgiveness. I want that forgiveness. And I took him through the Bible and shared him the gospel. And he was my first convert in the year 2007. And his name is Kaushik. Amen. And now he's in Gujarat. A first Hindu convert who trusted Jesus Christ. When he realized that nothing can forgive him. And because of that he's going to hell. And he understood that only Jesus Christ can forgive him. Because Jesus shed the precious blood. He died on the cross. And rose again on the third day. And became victorious. And if he would put his faith in Jesus. His sins will be forgiven. He understood. And he came and put his faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And trusted him as his Savior and Lord. And he became born again. Amen. Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. To declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed. Through the forbearance of God. 1 John chapter 2 verse 2 says, And he is the propitiation for our sins. And not only for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Amen. Amen. Jesus did not die only for the elect, but he died for the sins of the whole world. His blood was not shed only for the elect. His blood was shed for the whole world. Amen. And so whosoever will come to Jesus Christ, and put your faith in the atonement, in the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, in his death, burial and resurrection, the Bible says, shall be saved. Amen. Amen. 1 John 4.10 says, Here is love, herein is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us, and sent his son, to be the propitiation, for our sins. Amen. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The shed blood, death, and burial of the Lord Jesus Christ satisfied God. Amen. You, if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ today, you do not know where you will go if you die tonight. Oh boy, you are going to end up in a most 
terrible, tormenting place called hell. But you don't have to go there because Jesus paid your price. Amen. He shed his blood. He died on behalf of you and he rose again on the third day. If you will put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be saved at this moment. Amen. And that will satisfy God. The Bible says, And heaven will rejoice. And angels will sing praises. And that satisfies God. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Amen. Amen. Are you doubtful of your salvation? Today is the day. Are you not... Are you... Do you know that where you will go when you die? If you're not sure, today is the day. Don't go after idols. Don't go after temples. Don't go after pastors and priests and gurus. Come to Jesus Christ. And He will forgive your sin. And He will satisfy your thirst. And He will be satisfied when you are absolutely satisfied in Him. Amen. When you are totally satisfied in God, 